Hello and welcome. My name is Delmico L. Cunningham and today we'll be looking at how to set up reference images here inside of 3D Studio Max. Now, for certain modeling programs, setting up an image plane is actually an easy task. Um, here inside of Max, they've made that task just a little bit harder. Uh, there's two frames of thought when it comes to setting up your blueprints or reference images here inside of 3D Studio Max. One way is to actually use the background viewport to set up your images and be able to <clears throat> model off of those references. The other way is to set up some polygonal planes inside of Max and apply a shader with your image to those planes. So the first method, the first method that we're going to look at in here is going to be to use the background uh, feature inside of Max. So let's say that I have a front viewport or I have a front reference of my uh, image that I want to use. If I come in here and I press Alt plus B, Alt B opens up my viewport configuration. Inside of my viewport configuration, you'll see that it's automatically on background because I hit the Alt B. So here for background, I'm going to say use file, and I want to actually probably match the bitmap. And I'm going to go to files, and let's go, I've got an image on the desktop, let's see, we've got here on the desktop, I've got like this head image of this guy, and I'm going to say I want to apply to active view. So you can see that it actually applied my image to my active view. Now, this is the issue. In previous versions of 3D Studio Max, you were actually able to zoom and pan the image and lock it to the background. That feature has been removed from 2014. Um, I'm not sure if they've added that back to 2015 yet. I really haven't looked. Um, but a lot of people have been very upset that this feature has been removed from Max. So, to get around that, what they have done is that you're supposed to activate this particular view. So right now I have my front view uh, active right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit P to activate perspective. Now inside of your perspective view, you if I turn on the grid, you can see there's my grid. And if I zoom in and out, you can see that I actually, I actually am in a perspective you know, view. Uh, if I hit front, it goes back to, you know, the front view. So there's my front of the perspective. Okay? So to activate this to be able to do anything with, I want to come here to where, to the little plus sign right here on my viewport menu. I want to say 2D pan zoom mode. When I activate 2D pan and zoom mode, what ends up happening realistically is that now I have the ability to to uh, you know kind of pan in or zoom in rather and then pan around this and it is kinda like a Pesuedo, um 2D image plane now the thing that I don't like about this method of working with this is that sometimes you will actually rotate and because whatever you're working on is actually in a 3D space on the grid, it will lose its orientation to your reference image. So you have to come back in here and hit home, and then hit front, so they'll reorient, uh, reorient to, to that. Now, the thing about it is too, is that sometimes you will just, it'll just end up being pushed off. And when it, when that happens, it's really hard to get that piece back into space again. So let's say if I had this box, if I want to draw like this box here. And that's one of the issues too. When you look at this, you can draw this box. But the other thing about this is is that this box, unlike it normally would be if you were just using this in a in a in a uh, orthographic view, this box actually has perspective on it. And that's to me that's just really annoying. Uh, you can set this to orthographic, so this is like an orthographic front view or orthographic perspective view, um, 
But the problem with that, and the problem that I see with that, let me go back in here and say orthographic. The problem with that as well is that no longer does your pan and zoom, uh, your 2D pan and zoom actually work. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, for me personally, I don't like using the method of using perspective and then activating this 2D pan and zoom thing. I think that it was a bad choice for Autodesk to actually remove the the function of just making a background image and letting you manipulate that image in your orthographic view. So either way I'm going to hit Alt B and I'm just going to turn this and say use environment background and uh, let's do that environment, let's do gradients, let's do all of them. So that was one method and you can you can very well use that I'm gonna change this back to a front view you can very well use that and you know if your success is better with it then by all means go for it uh, I particularly do not like that method um, <clears throat> excuse me the thing here inside of inside of max that works better is to actually just use a plane so I'm just gonna drag a plane out and go in here to my modify panel get rid of the length and the width segments on this I don't need those and I'm gonna make sure that this is on shaded view and let's make sure that this is shaded and so now I have that in my front view and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit M on the keyboard to open up my slate material editor and give it a second there it goes and what I want to do is I want to go in here and make myself a standard material so there's a standard material I'm gonna double click on that material on that shader rather not material but on that shader and I'm gonna go down here to maps to the map slot and I'm gonna go to diffuse and click on none click on bitmap double click it let's go to the desktop let's go to my folder there's the, the front of that guy's head hit open and now what I have is I actually have that image mapped onto this shader. Now I'm going to take this shader, you see this little this little uh, icon right here? This right here is the output from the shader. I'm going to left mouse click and drag the output of the shader right onto my plane. Now you might look at your plane and your plane is all gray. Well that's perfectly fine, that's, that's normal. Because what you want to do with this shader is you actually want to come back into slate and you want to go here to, to where it says show shaded material and viewport so when I click on that you can see that my uh, shader actually shows up it's got the image on it the only downside to this is that you really kind of have to know the size of your image when you do this and to keep it proportional um, that's one of the only drawbacks is trying to be able to keep this proportional uh, what I would want to do at this point is I'm going to just select my image plane and hold shift and get my rotate tool and just rotate this 90 degrees off just like that and I'm going to say I make a copy of it so now you'll see what we have inside of my perspective viewport is I have a front view here I have a front plane here and a side plane here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my, to my slate material editor make a brand new shader and let's go here to the diffuse map slot double click on bitmap and let's go get his side view and I'm gonna attach that side view to the side image plane and also make sure that I turn on show shaded map in viewport now sometimes you'll end up with you know kookiness like this it's completely fine all you have to do is just make sure that you you know change the rotation of it and I just change it to 90 down here uh, in my coordinates and just rotate it the other way one thing that I do like to do inside of Max is turn off this realistic thing I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the realistic viewport inside of, Ma inside of uh, Max the whole nitrous setup um, it's great in theory but when you're working on stuff if you see if I turn on realistic um, my viewport works and everything's kinda nice but you see I start to have shadows uh, and I don't I don't particularly care for that because I'm getting shadows and things like that on my image with realistic turn on. I turn off realistic and just turn it on to shaded you see it still shows up shaded I still get shadows at certain clipping angles but it's not 
you know, distracting. So from this, I should, I can actually start modeling this particular face to get my 3D object. Because I've got a front view and a side view. And when I look here in my left viewport, when I turn this on, you can see that that shows up in my left viewport like it's supposed to. I'm going to scale it out like this. He looks, he was kind of like shrunk in. So I'm going to scale this out a little bit. So now this is nice for me to be able to come in here and use my normal pan and my normal zoom and I don't have to worry about this thing going like cuckoo crazy for Cocoa Puffs or something like that because um, that's that that's the one reason why I do not like the 2D pan and zoom function inside of a perspective window it, it's just a little bit messy I'm just not a fan of it uh, the last thing that I would do with this image with the or with these reference images is to select them and come in here and go to my manager, my uh, layer manager rather, and open up a brand new, uh, or, or actually add a brand new layer. So right here, this very first icon, I'm going to say create new layer containing objects, and click that. And what I'm going to do for these two guys is right click on my layer 001, and I'm going to go to the object properties, and I'm going to uncheck show frozen in gray, and hit OK. And then I'm going to come in here and actually freeze that layer. And when I freeze that layer, you can see I can no longer select them, but they don't show up gray. Now, if I hadn't have, if I had not have changed the show frozen in gray function, this is what would have happened. And your images would have went away and you'd have been like, oh my god, where are my images? So make sure you just go to the object properties of the layer that you're working with and say show frozen in gray, uncheck that and hit OK. And once you do that, you are ready to go and start your modeling. I hope this video was helpful in being able to set up your images inside of 3D Studio Max.